beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. Amen. I'm happy and truly very honored to be here. And um, thank you so much, Victory Life Bible Church. Thank you for always receiving me. I love this church in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I'd like us to stand as we honor the angel over this house and his dear wife, Apostle Achidume. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Um, and the reason why I do this many times is because just like the man of God said everywhere you see greatness everywhere you see grace don't ignore it hallelujah we're gathered here because of God but we're also gathered here because of the vision and the obedience and the consistency of one man please one more time help me honor the grace of God upon his servant hallelujah let me thank all those who received us. Thank you for the graciousness. Thank you for the honor. The truth is that there is nothing that we have outside of the mercies of God. You know, sometimes we politicize these statements, but it is still the truth, whether or not we believe it. Hallelujah. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And every time you doubt that, all it takes is for God to take one step out of your life. And it doesn't matter what level you are you will come crashing hallelujah so if ever you see us doing the things that we're doing there is a hand behind us you see and it is to him that we give that glory many years ago the lord told me he said if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you that is it if you will let men see me there is nothing is I will not give you. Um, while we're standing, I just, I just, want, I just to want to minister, minister to, somebody. to somebody. Am I doing something right? Doing something right? Hallelujah. I'm sure our technical sure people are working on it. Maybe you walk on the reverb. Or thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something. Every time you come to god trusting him for lifting or trusting god for everything it is not difficult to walk with god yours is to make a determination that your life will be ever about revealing him the temptation of all men is that we like to be celebrities especially because this is a plague particularly in the african continent we've come from wounded backgrounds by default so the pressure to want to show that i have arrived the pressure to want to show that I've made it, I'm a great preacher or a great, it's, it's a temptation that befalls all men. But there is something about the revelation of Jesus when you have, it doesn't matter how he lifts you, you see, you will intend.
intentionally let people know that, that my assignment here is that the more you look at me if i'm truly a mirror you should not see me if you look at me and you still see me then something is wrong with that mirror if you stand in front of a mirror and see another person that mirror is an object of divination it's no longer a mirror to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see are shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, holy, holy. Father, we thank you for tonight. It is an honor to bring your word to your people. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for this amazing work, blessing the nations, blessing this territory lord i pray that as i bring your word that your people will see you in your power that they will see you in your wisdom and that you will glorify jesus once again in this place for in jesus matchless name we have prayed thank you once again please be seated thank you my dear people thank you amen so i'm teaching very briefly for tonight this is my first session with you and I was very touched when um, I saw the theme for the meeting um, it, it caught my heart because for me it is a representation of all that I stand for all that I live for everything that I do is centered around the understanding of this theme I have taught across many subjects by the grace of God I have taught on faith I have taught on healing i've taught on power dynamics of the anointing i've taught on success in all its ramifications i've taught on prosperity i've taught on purpose i've taught on destiny but none of these teachings in themselves captivate me as much as a theme that for me represents the epicenter of the believer's pursuit hallelujah every other thing we seek outside of this central theme um, is just auxiliary knowledge the foundation the pivotal point of the believers pursuit is on understanding the person of Jesus you can get a healing you can get a miracle you can get um, delivered you can prosper Jesus is beyond a principle principles are derived from the knowledge of his person and so as we delve into this subject for the time that I have I want to request that you lend me attention and I want us to assume the posture of a student that is ever willing to learn because sometimes um, what we know can stop us from knowing what we need to know the Bible says in first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 he says and if any man think that he knoweth anything he says that he knoweth nothing as he ought to know there is a standard in the spirit that God desires and demands that we rise unto as far as knowledge is concerned and so I've come to lend my voice alongside the many other preachers who have come and will be coming perhaps um, to the end that we really understand Jesus probably in a way that we have not seen him before and the end of revelation is empowerment any dimension of light and truth that fails to empower is false for the bible says that was the true light that lighted upon every man if it is true revelation it is for all and then it empowers ezekiel chapter 2 1 and 2 the bible says he said unto me son of man stand upon your feet and he did not have the power ezekiel chapter 2 1 and 2 didn't have the power to stand and verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when not before when he spake so with his words 
came the empowerment hallelujah the meaning of that is that whilst you are listening to me in the name of jesus the grace component that is behind everything i'm saying it will also rest upon you Amen. that at the end of this meeting you will not just leave with an intelligent information but that number one the word of god would have altered your understanding and grace would have been deposited at a higher dimension in your life amen. you believe that say amen. amen there are three questions i came to answer in this conference as far as my session is concerned or three areas that i came to look at by the spirit of god number one i came by the spirit of god to help us understand the person of jesus and shortly we'll be going to the scripture the text for the conference where the word was gotten from it's important we understand jesus and in understanding jesus there are three things i want us to consider number one who is he who exactly is jesus if you never had the opportunity to be part of a christian faith perhaps you were somewhere across the globe um, raised in one of the many religions over 4,000 religions that we have in the world and then you had the opportunity to meet such a person and then now to introduce jesus what would you say sometimes we take for granted because we have the leverage of a foundation of christianity even if you were not personally born again the fact that you grew up around everything church it makes it easier for you to just flow with the understanding of jesus but when you meet someone who has never had any encounter whatsoever who would you tell him jesus is question two what was his mission why did jesus come you will be surprised ladies and gentlemen how many individuals how many believers and that includes preachers people who shout from the pulpit week in week out who cannot articulate with intelligence the mission of jesus sometimes we find ourselves victims of having knowledge across several things we know several things except what jesus came for hallelujah it's very important the third and final question that i hope that this discussion tonight and then tomorrow would answer is did he succeed in his mission and if yes what is the proof did jesus really succeed in his mission because the revelation of the third question is where the victory of the believer lies and i'm talking to a church here that is cultured along the understanding of victory so one last time who is he who is jesus exactly beyond the walls of religion who is jesus beyond the walls of history who is he beyond the galilean that just walked across born uh, by a virgin in the midst of so much controversy an encounter with an angel and then what was his mission you need to understand the mission of jesus because our assignment on earth as believers is an extension of that mission and if you do not have an understanding of that mission foundationally it will corrupt what you call purpose there is a big difference between purpose and ambition they can be related but one precedes the other ambition without purpose will only waste your time and you will rigmarole and go around earth frustrated and then end your life in shame and pain hallelujah and so did he succeed i like the third point because this is what will define the quality of the christian experience of any two believers you will be learning in the course of this teaching that principally the assignment of every believer is to eventually be a validation a validator of the victory that is in christ that means the entire span of your lifetime should be a project proving to earth that indeed jesus's mission did not fail and if you fail to achieve that with your life you have robbed god an opportunity from getting glory from your life are we together and then if it is true that jesus succeeded in that mission what is the proof there has to be an evidence an attestation to the fact that he defeated for instance sin satan hell and the grave 
because for many in the body that is just a religious cliche and we hardly can stand in defense to that statement but the bible makes a profound statement and let me prime your curiosity already um, acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ and it says great grace was upon them all with great power not with discussions not with assumptions with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ praise the name of the lord you have that down let's go to acts chapter 1 then acts chapter 1 i'll read 10 and 11 this is where the theme for the conference was derived from now from a theological standpoint acts chapter 1 um, the bible presents the disciples now confused jesus had gone and promised them that on the third day he will resurrect and the bible tells us that when he resurrected there were many other activities that happened around his life and through a span of 50 days he was on earth and among those 50 days 40 days among the 50 days he spent it catching up on the remaining lecture that he was having with the disciples who would soon be apostles before his ascension to heaven and he gathered them asked them to wait and as soon as he came back to life the bible says he put them together and over a span of 40 days he was expounding to them the more on the things that pertain unto the kingdom hallelujah now at this time many of the disciples did not understand the things we know now the reason is number one jesus already told them that he had many things to tell them that they could not bear because they had not received the holy spirit the other things jesus was going to tell them was revealed by paul are we together now so the way the christian faith is built is that the gospel gives you the foundation but the epistles give you the structure of the believer's understanding jesus never taught extensively about the ministry of the holy spirit it was paul by the spirit who gave a lot of order and precision to the believer we never knew who we were in christ because we were not taught not even by jesus but he did tell us that there were other things that the holy spirit will help us to understand are we together now so in acts chapter one they were concerned about what they presumed to be the restoration of the nation of israel because a prophetic word had come that israel would one day become a nation and that has happened historically so in their minds they thought he was the messiah who would come defeat caesar defeat herod and then now bring back the nation of israel and so their following jesus was not necessarily out of love they were hoping to get stakes political appointments are we together when those governments were overthrown that was why peter i mean james and john lobbied their mother because when they saw that the process i mean this invincible man it looked like nobody would defeat him they spoke to their mother to try to lobby a position for them remember the story and so she already came and used the heart of a mother to say my dear son jesus by the time you are done with herod and caesar would you grant that as you sit down it will be an honor for me as a mother to see my children sitting at your left and your right when the other disciples had it because they too were eyeing that position they were angry they said are you the only one who is interested in 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 this and so as time proceeded and they noticed jesus was not saying anything about fighting herod fighting caesar nor the promised opportunity they got angry and they started asking him a question is listen it will no longer be a rumor we have left all to follow you what is in this thing for us we won't be discussing quietly and feel cheated you get the whole story now and jesus said aha finally he says no man who has left this and that and that they still didn't understand it is the reason why the moment jesus gave up himself they all ran away they ran away in pain it was beyond fear they felt cheated three and a half years of their lives had been wasted some of them were fishermen some of them were professionals they left all to follow him because he gave them a proposition that he was messiah they did not understand it was a spiritual assignment they looked forward to the fulfillment of prophecy where other this this heathenistic kings would be overthrown by jesus now jesus finally gives himself and they ran away hallelujah 
is the reason why when he came back to life peter felt guilty john chapter 21 you find that there and jesus comes to peter peter said i go a fishing let me go back to do what i was doing before this deceiver came in the name of a savior and the remaining disciples said we go with you they struggled and did not catch fish when jesus came and met them when peter discerned that it was the resurrected christ he said depart from me i am a sinner when you now get to verse 15 jesus looks at john 21 and verse 15 he says he says um peter now i i meant i said john peter really simon but jonah lovest thou me more than this and then they began that discussion and he said feed my sheep feed my lamb and peter was broken he was caught to the heart and you would see a converted peter standing in defense of truth in acts chapter 2 when the holy ghost came upon them on the day of pentecost peter got up and said i ran away once i will not run away again he said this is that which was prophesied by joel i just wanted to give you a background okay so jesus was giving them his final charge before leaving acts chapter 1 they now said would you at this time restore the kingdom the nation of israel and then he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times that the father has put within his care verse 8 now says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you are we bible students he says and you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth now verse 10 or verse 9 well 10 for sake of time the bible says that while they looked at him as he levitated right in their presence isn't it amazing that this was not a vision they literally saw him bodily he lifted up from the earth and was on his way and vanished through the cloud and the bible says while they looked steadfastly towards heaven there appeared two men in white apparel verse 11 now which also did say ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into the heavens then he says this same jesus now let's speak english for a few minutes you don't tell anyone this same anything until they've encountered that same thing before you never introduce anything to a person the first time and use the word same same suggests that the person already has an idea of what you are talking about are we together now so this same jesus is not a message for those who do not know him it's a message for those who want to increase so tonight i want to talk about this jesus first then we'll talk about this same jesus for those who knew him because when you are talking to someone who has never met him you cannot say this same jesus which one i've never even met him in the first place i want to introduce to you the jesus of the bible the one he wants the nations to know not the one who has been battered through the lens of religion not the one who has come under the prejudices of preachers intellectuals businessmen culture and history god demands and desires that there is a portrait of jesus that be presented to the nation there are about eight billion people there about and counting inhabitants on this earth right now and out of them statistics will tell us that there are only about 2.8 billion who are professing or practicing christians that is a very scary statistics especially because we look forward to the imminent return of the christ and yet you can see that using these statistics it seems like the church has not done a very great job because if you mark the church against all the spiritual provisions that have been given the name of jesus the word of god the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of angels the fivefold ministry you would expect that a better job should have been done in covering that gap because the bible says god's ultimate desire is that all men will know him and then to come into the knowledge of the truth are we together now and so i think i have thought about this myself as to why 
there are many churches many preachers many conferences many conventions many books many christian names and you would think that all of those things should translate into an acceleration in terms of in gathering and harvest but it does not seem to be so and this has been statistically proven and the way the christian faith was structured is such that when you receive jesus it was not designed to be hidden there are few times they hid their convictions and that was when they were persecuted and even at that many of them became bold and were willing to be martyred it then means there is something about the portrait of jesus we are selling to the nations are we together now from a technological standpoint we have people who have brought up softwares that are not even up to 15 years old and they sold that idea that idea today is used by over four to five billion people the Facebook's the Instagram's I mean this idea some of them are younger than 10 years yet it penetrated beyond the borders of culture race demography and many have received them because they structured those applications in a way that men saw the value and the need for it we have been presenting Jesus for many years and the nations are corporately rejecting him. It means we have to re-examine what we are presenting. Are we learning? If it is the God of the Bible, what is the difference between our presentation of Jesus and what happened on the day of Pentecost? Because the Bible tells us with no PA system, with no kind of advantage whatsoever peter got up a frail fisherman and delivered a lecture a sermon for only god knows how long and as a result of that one presentation of jesus he wrapped up his message by saying let it be known to you o israel that the jesus you have crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ your bible my bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do when last did anybody ask you that question are we together now yeah and the bible says as a result of that beautiful presentation three thousand people in one meeting three thousand people no social media three thousand people no public address system three thousand people no internet no opportunity to document as we have today three thousand people no access to bibles freely given to everyone they were kept as scrolls in temples read and folded back three thousand people so let's work together ladies and gentlemen as we attempt to use the few minutes that we have to introduce jesus the way he wants to be known john chapter 17 and verse 3 jesus made a very profound statement praying to the father and he said this is life eternal jesus is speaking now he says to know the the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent i think from scripture the most concise introduction of jesus in my opinion that is both enlightening and, and, and inspiring is found in John chapter 1. John presented Jesus in such an intelligent manner. Now all other synoptic accounts of the gospel, they came some from a historic standpoint, others came just with the testimonies and his humanity, but John began tracing the divinity of Jesus. Let's read the, the first 12 verses of John chapter 1 very quickly. Is God helping someone already? In the beginning, he says, was the Word. I like John. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Can we continue? The same. Now you see our Word again the same haven't told you something before that time he says keep this understanding as we run through the list the same was in the beginning with god then he now begins to describe something beautiful he says all things were made by him the same one that same word and without him meaning outside of his influence was not anything made that was made next verse in him who is the him 
the same one we're talking about in verse 1 in him was life and that life was the light of men and the Bible says the light that was in him can shine through darkness in a way that darkness will never comprehend it verse 6 there was a man now he digresses to speak about John still strengthening the understanding of that same person there was a man he says sent from God whose name was John verse 7 he says the same man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that men through the excellency of his witness now might believe he goes back to his discussion he was not that light he was only sent to bear witness of the light verse 9 that was the true light who is he talking about now the same word now notice he never mentioned Jesus here that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world verse 10 he said he was in the world and though the world was made by him the world knew him not he came to his own and his own received him not I wish I had time an intelligent mind will read verse 11 and not just pass it you will have to ask why because when you come to your own you should have an advantage of reception if I come to my people what happened that his own people rejected him but the Bible says verse 12 but as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name blessed be the name of the Lord who is Jesus God began to reveal himself all through scripture and he revealed himself dimensionally in many ways particularly to the nation of Israel they named him all the names that you know God to be in the Bible has captured Jaira, Rapha. These were different dimensions of God that were captured in his name and preserved so that generations will learn God. But for the sake of time, I like to start by helping us understand who Jesus is. Number one, the Bible tells us very clearly that Jesus himself, he called himself the Son of God. Jesus called himself God he called himself the son of God John chapter 1 called him the word the Greek expression is the logos of God that means the thoughts of a man that seeks to find expression Jesus the Bible calls him light the light of the world in fact are we together but I think that for me the greatest way to really understand Jesus is to hear what he had to say about himself. Many of us here have written books and one of the greatest ways to find out about a man is to listen to what that man said about himself. Whatever a man says about himself is considered the most trusted information about that man. Do you agree? So let's consider very quickly what Jesus said about himself. I will run through the list Ten of them scattered from scripture. We may not have the time to explain because I just want you to have an understanding of who and what Jesus said he was. Are you ready? Number one, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Please write that down. John 6, 35. Jesus called himself the bread of life. Number two, Jesus called himself the light of the world John 8 12 Jesus called himself the light of the world my apologies if I stretch you a bit the light of the world you just write number three Jesus called himself the door he said this about himself I am the door you know what the door means the authorized access point I came into this beautiful auditorium through a door you find that 
in john chapter 10 and verse 7 you also find that in verse 9 i am the door what else did jesus say about himself jesus called himself the good shepherd i am the good shepherd john 10 11 i am the good shepherd there are bad shepherds but there are good shepherds are we together number five jesus made a profound statement in john 11 calling himself the resurrection and the life hallelujah i am the resurrection and the life john 11 25 i am the resurrection and the life number six what did jesus say about himself he called himself in john 14 and verse 6 the way and the truth and the life i am the way he said i am the truth and i am the life these were the words of jesus john 14 6 i am the way and the truth and the life he now said no man cometh unto the father that means there is no other way of accessing the father i am not one of many options to the father he clarified it by himself that there are no two ways to the father he says no man come to the father so any man who claims to have a relationship with the father ignoring jesus is lying because jesus said i am the only way to the father number seven what did jesus call himself he called himself the true vine john 15 15 i am the true vine i like this i am the true vine john 15 verse 1 my apologies and then verse 5 john 15 1 and verse 5 please correct that i am the true vine can i give you three more number eight i like this one now we leave the gospels and we go to revelation where john is caught up in the isle of patmos and jesus continues speaking there he calls himself i am alpha omega beginning and ending now i don't know how a man would describe himself that way but this is jesus for you alpha omega beginning and the ending revelations 1 verse 8 revelations 21 verse 6 revelations 22 verse 13 i'll take it again i am alpha omega beginning and the ending revelations 1 verse 8 revelations 21 verse 6 revelations 22 verse 13 if you're with me shout a loud amen, amen. number nine what did jesus say about himself introducing himself to us in revelation chapter 1 and verse 17 he called himself the first and the last i am the first the originator and the culminator of all things i am the first and the last i am the first and the last i am the first that means everything including what troubles you came after me i have the power to bring every i am the first and the last whatever you face in your life did not precede jesus the only thing greater than jesus must be what came before him he said i am the first and the last finally what did he taught himself revelations 1 18 hallelujah i am he that liveth i was dead but not forever i am alive forevermore i am he that liveth i was dead but only for three days make sure every time you talk about the jesus who died you remember that he only died for three days in the name of jesus christ and he says i am alive forevermore amen are we learning so jesus had all this to say about himself called himself many beautiful names the word of god 
called himself the resurrection and the life. Do you know why he gave you all these options? Because the entire journey of your life will be, listen carefully, you will need all of these revelations of Jesus to survive your lifetime. He took out time to spread an understanding of himself such that there is no endeavor in life. Are we together now? As you sojourn through life, you must find a reason to need Jesus. If you don't need him as the resurrection and the life, you will need him as the door. If you don't need him as the door, one day you will need him as um, maybe the good shepherd. With these 10 descriptions of Jesus, there is no man on earth who is alive, who intends to live long, who will not face a challenge that only Jesus by the description of himself can solve. Did you get that now? If you reject the bread of life, you will need the light of the world. If you reject the light, you will need the door. If you reject the door, you will need the good shepherd. If you reject the good shepherd, you will need the resurrection and the life. The day sickness comes upon your body. If you reject the resurrection and the life, you will, the confusion that plagues our world, you will need the way, the truth, and the life. If you reject him, you will need the true vine. A time will come, you will be so confused about your life. That's when you will learn him as the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. Are we together? And when you get to your final days on earth, it will be very comforting for you to know that he was the one who died, but now he is alive and lives forevermore. And he said this about himself, because I live, you will live also. This gives you hope beyond the grave. Are we learning now? Now, very quickly, I want us to examine why Jesus came. Why Jesus came? Why did he come? There are three principal assignments that represent Jesus' mission on earth. And if you do not understand this, the foundation of your Christian faith will be very faulty. And my Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, it said, what can the righteous do? Are we ready? Number one, Jesus, his first assignment on earth was not even to die. You see that? His first assignment on earth was as an accurate revelation of the misunderstood God. Jesus came as a manuscript to correct our understanding of God. Until the manifestation of Jesus, nobody had an accurate understanding of God. So he came as a revelation and as a manifestation of the misunderstood God. In Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spoke to us. Did I get that right? Hebrews chapter 1, my apologies. 1 to 3. God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past by the fathers, you know, and the prophets have in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things and by whom also he made the world. Verse 3, let's read it together. Who being the brightness of his, uh -huh, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. You can stop there. So the Bible tells us that Jesus came as a physical manifestation of God who they had longed to see God. You know, the, before Jesus came, they only understood God through the lens of priests and prophets. Whatever priests and prophets told them God was, or God was saying, or God was doing, the people had to corporately believe it. Are we together? And through the lens of the prophets and the priests, you would see, using Jesus as a reference, that many of them did not not do justice to the description of God. There were many things in the Old Testament that was credited to God that now from the lens of Jesus, we know they made a mistake because they were humans. When you read the Bible entirely from the lens of the prophets and the priests, it will give you a very confusing description of God. It will be a blend of kindness and evil. It will be a blend, you will hear things like an evil spirit departed from the Lord. And that statement will confuse you. 
because the entire nation of God's covenant people did not have the privilege of personal experience with God are we together God will isolate an individual whether Moses whether Samuel and have a covenant relationship with that person and that person would have the mandate of revealing God to the people based on his experience and Paul mentoring us in first Corinthians 13 he said we see in part and we prophesy in part so it is a default in all men that no matter your level of alignment as a single individual unassisted by the revelation of Jesus you will not do justice to your knowledge of God you would see the mix of divination and accurate prophetic manifestation even in the lives of ancient prophets because many of them came from you know traditional practices and so on and so forth it's important for you to get this background because Jesus came as a correction to our understanding of God that means he came as a marking script how many of you know what a marking script is a marking script is the reference that is used to mark every other script so a teacher or a lecturer can tell someone help me and mark this he gives you a marking script are we together you compare the answers that were written against the marking script is the reference the first assignment of Jesus was to clarify the misunderstanding we had about God and he did that by living his life and before he God had to accredit him and said this is my beloved son in other words don't be afraid to hear him he came from me that means whatever Jesus did not do is not consistent with the character of God it didn't matter what the prophet said did you get that now listen if you do not understand God from the lens of Jesus you will be confused demons will take advantage of scripture and deceive you I hope you know that Satan also knows it is written the devil will make you do many bad things having a scriptural reference there are many believers in confusion as to their Christian experience today because they have Jesus is not the focal point of their pursuit and because of that they are routing through different mechanisms in search for God and the devil knowing your zeal without an understanding of Jesus as the reference he will use scripture to bring you into divination and you will get there and not even know all he needs to do is to show you where it was practiced in scripture did you get that now there are herbalists today if you go to the shrine a Bible is part of the materials they used to con and because you see a Bible there you convince yourself that this must be God so Jesus came to correct it are we following now for those who are involved in sea adventures and voyage and in geography there is what they call the true north that whenever you are lost at sea your first assignment is to determine the true north if you can find the true north no matter where you are you will be able to through from that standpoint whoever wants you to be lost at sea will, will cripple your capacity to find the true north because if you can find the true north you can know where you are Jesus is that true north you want to know how right culture is gauge it against Jesus you want to know how right the educational system of the world is gauge it against Jesus you would be learning shortly that a believer is not just one who has surrendered his life to Jesus a believer is one who has subscribed to Jesus as the thoughts of God the logos of God not just as a person that your entire life is governed by a permit me to use a philosophy so when people ask for your opinion you really don't have an opinion you are already bound by a thought that your life should run. Are, are we together now so when you ask me whether I like something or not it's not whether I like it or not it's about the position that Jesus reveals concerning that matter this is a believers life this will cure the various confusions that plague our world today when people ask me opinions about many things I tell them as a person my opinions can vacillate based on culture my experience and so on and so forth 
Are you seeing that now? But when Jesus becomes your reference, it is not about what you like or don't like. It is not even about right or wrong. It is what is in Jesus or not. Did you get that now? Jesus came as a correction. Now, the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. We have a right to doubt that word until that scripture is verified in Jesus. What did Jesus do when he saw sick people? Did he pass them? That means God loves. We can now say it is true that God loves because we saw Jesus living out that love life. Are we together? When God, you say God is holy and he hates sin, you have a right to doubt it until you check Jesus. He was a man tempted in all ways is yet without sin when he entered the temple and he saw abuses of the temple he reacted that was the thoughts of God that is God's opinion about any abuse in his temple did you get that now Jesus came please do not forget this Jesus came as a reference and a correction to our idea about God so when the Bible says a lying spirit came from God with all due respect to those who wrote it, we now have the audacity by grace through the lens of Jesus to correct that statement. Because the Bible tells us, John chapter 1 answers it full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. There is no variableness, no shadow of turning. It's not that God cannot lie. God does not lie, he cannot lie. Are we seeing that? So we know that something was wrong with the experience of the prophet who captured that vision. We must commend them for at least documenting what they saw. This is the reason why God gave us the Holy Spirit even though we still have the Bible. Because revelation is progressive. Are we learning? God loves but how much does he love study Jesus how far did Jesus go to prove the love of God greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life is that true you said the Lord is my shepherd you can say that scripture is a lie until you study how Jesus walked with his disciples was he careless did he leave them when he was at the sea and the sea was about to capsize you know the boat they woke him up and he got up and did something about it. Then we can trust that God is a good leader. That means he's a father enough for me to trust my life. Are we together now? That everything the Bible says about God, you have a right to doubt it until you verify it using the lens of Jesus. The first assignment of Jesus on the earth was to be a correction. Correction. This is the reason why nations train and send ambassadors. Ambassadors are mandated, they are vested with the responsibility of not just promoting bilateral relationships but defending the interests of the nations and in doing so, their first assignment is to, to give a worthy presentation of that nation. Am I right on that? They preserve everything that makes that nation admirable, their culture, their intelligence, whatever it is. When Jesus walked upon the earth, all he was projecting was the Father. Because until that time, the people had a mixed understanding about the Father. I hope you know that when Jesus came, the nation of Israel were under bondage. They did not under... How, who is this covenant God that says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness, and is happy watching us go through the, the torture of the Roman government? And when Jesus came, when he saw the woman who was bound 18 years, he said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham. In other words, if you want to understand my ministry here, make reference to what I told Abraham. He kept referring them to the things that God said. Number two, let's hurry up. What's the second assignment of Jesus? My life changed when I understood this. I studied God from the lens of jesus and he redefined god for me if someone comes and prophesies to you now now i'm not to be sarcastic even if i'm the one if i look at you and say you die tomorrow you have a right to not be afraid and judge my prophecy including my ignorance from the lens of jesus he said i am the resurrection 
and the life. You see, and it is written is greater than I saw. So, your, your knowledge of Jesus, listen to me. It may not be that the person lied. It may even be that that's what Satan had in plan, in plan for you. But because of your knowledge of God through Jesus, are we together now? That he came as a life-giving spirit. That gives you a lot of comfort. Jesus himself gave the story of the prodigal son. That means if you have a child and the devil is telling you your child will not amount to anything, you learn how God works by studying that story. And you know that no matter how far, even if it's 10 years my child has gone home, my intercession will be worth it because prodigal children can return home. Listen, you have to build your spiritual orientation from the portrait of the person Jesus because religion has a portrait it wants to sell to you. Culture, with all due respect, has a portrait it wants to sell to you. Are we together? And if you have a mix of all these portraits, the picture of God you will have is an ugly deity seated on the throne with horns desiring to destroy you. You can re-edit that portrait with the intelligence of an artist. Remove the things that are not there and you have the beautiful picture of a loving father. Many believers live in fear. Many believers cannot walk with God because there is a misrepresentation of God that was sold to them. If you're understanding me, say amen. amen. It is the reason why when we make altar calls, we make it with audacity because we know the one who is about to receive you. Hmm. The one who can live 99 for the sake of one. Are, are we together now? It is the reason why when we make an altar call, we start clapping from the first person who comes. Because every single soul that stands is what the blood of that Jesus. When you know this as a man of God, you will not frown if you make an altar call and two people come. The devil will not tell you you feel like a failure. Ask him, can you die for the two people? Do you have enough compassion to have died for the two people? The man today we call Bill Graham of blessed memory. It was such an altar call. The pastor who got him saved, he felt discouraged and felt he had failed in ministry. And one day he shouted like I'm speaking to you now and made an altar call and only one small boy just trolls out and the man felt like a total failure. Help me guess the name of that one small boy. Billy Graham. He did not know that nations had come out for that altar call. Is someone learning? Jesus came as a correction. I want you to read the life of Jesus. Take it as a project. Study the Gospels. Study Jesus to understand God. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. Don't worry, my people. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Can we sing it one more time? That you are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. This is the Jesus the nations are looking for. This is the Jesus that both the rich and old will see the need of him. Hmm. The kind of Jesus that only the poor need is not the real Jesus. The kind of Jesus that only the rich need is not the real Jesus. When Jesus is presented properly, all men will run to him. Because the one thing the poor and the rich need together is love. They may have wealth, the rich, and the poor may lack wealth. But no man can resist the power of love. That's why it was love that defeated hell, sin, Satan, and the grave. Number two, why did Jesus come? Number two, he came to make the life of God accessible to man by reconciling man to God. Please write that down. The second
second assignment of Jesus when he walked upon the earth was to make the life of God accessible to man by reconciling man to God. He came to make the life of God accessible to man. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Victory Life, are we still here? That whosoever, someone shout whosoever, let the devil hear you say whosoever when it has to do with the life of god whosoever Igbo, yoruba hausa whosoever cultist prostitute whosoever provided you believe in him there are certain things that were not given to all the bible says he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets are we together but when it has to do with the life of god he desires everybody including your old grandfather i know he's 85 but he's still part of those in that list whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus was speaking and he said the thief cometh not but for to steal please hear me believers to kill and to destroy but he said i am come my manifesto this is why i'm that means every time you see me these are the things you should be thinking about life 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 every time you see me life if you are sick and i show up life defeated and i show up life and it says i am come to give you that life and to have it more abundantly amplified says to its fullest life that means anything that looks like death is an attack you don't need to ask if it's the will of god poverty an expression of death sickness an expression of death limitation an expression of death not having the ability to take care of your children don't ask if it's the will of god it is that jesus said i have come verify the things happening around you by my manifesto if they do not look like things minister life he's saying fight it no matter how long fight it the devil will deceive you and make you look like i think it's just god it's a lie he said i am come if you see me know that my ministry is to give life you are the one that we praise listen if you know this as a preacher listen it will guide the kinds of sermons you will preach once you mount the pulpit, now I'm speaking to the body of Christ. You know immediately, if you claim you love Jesus, the theme of your ministry must be life. At the end of your ministration, the dead should come back. Spiritually, emotionally. Are we together now? Everything that leaves people dead and keeps people dying is partnership with Satan. that someone is in this place right now you came diagnosed that you have cancer and you just strolled into church because they told you that God is there if it is true that God is there what is the proof back to Jesus where two or three are gathered in my name he said I am there so I know he's there not because of any cloud I'm, I know he's there not because I fell down when I stood up. Jesus already told us that the moment you have two or three gathered in his name, that there is an assurance beyond the realm of feelings that he's there. Are we together? And if he's there, then you connect it to John 10:10. 10, 10. Why is he there? I am come. I am come for this convention. I am come to your family. That the moment a father and a mother, a husband and a wife and the children hold hands, the moment they say, Lord, we thank you for your presence. Everybody's thinking life. The life giver has arrived. The life giver has arrived. The one who will help us pay the bills has arrived. The one who will take away shame. Let them keep laughing while we invite him. Provided we can get him to come. Listen, listen. This is my spiritual orientation as I minister to people. I will never minister to a people and not minister life. Because number one, his manifesto 
is to be an expression of the life of God. Are we together now? It doesn't matter in what form or fashion the sermon comes. Whether it comes as a rebuke, as a correction, as an admonishment, as an exegesis of scripture, the end point must be life. If I rebuke you of sin and I leave you there, I misrepresented Jesus. I must go past it and show you that after now rebuking you, there must be life. If I tell you being poor is not the way and I leave you there, I misrepresented Jesus because the giving you the revelation that you are poor, you are already aware. Your pain is enough, is enough information that you are in that state. I must show you the biblical pathway to life. Everything that is pro-life is worthy of being taught in church, provided it reveals Jesus. Prosperity, increase, consecration, holiness, the revelation of Jesus, spiritual growth. Are we together now? Everything that can reveal Jesus and can reveal his abundant life must be taught the saints. This is why he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the maturing of the saints is somebody learning next time they ask you why did Jesus come know that he came to give life and in order of priority spiritual life is his first port of call I have taught and you may have heard me teach it the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation everywhere you see an unbeliever no matter what you give that unbeliever pocket money a house rent advice counsel treatment just know that you only solve temporal problems this is the orientation every christian must have the moment you see an unbeliever at the back of your mind your ultimate project on that man will be to bring him to the kingdom whether he's a driver whether he's your cook whether he's a barber so when you interact with unbelievers it doesn't mean you harass everybody every day and everywhere but you know at the back of your mind that my project on this man is not complete until he receives the life of God if believers had this orientation the statistics I gave you would have been covered long enough most believers do not know why Jesus came so when most believers say I want to serve Jesus they do not know that what they are supposed to be understanding by that statement is I want to be an extension of the reason why he came the assignment of every believer in the life of an unbeliever is to get that person to become a believer are we together the greatest need you may have heard me say of an unsafe person is salvation the greatest need of a saved person is transformation the greatest need of a transformed person is empowerment the greatest need of an empowered person is purpose this is how it works in the kingdom so when you see someone who is not saved your first assignment is to get him to encounter the God of the Bible beyond a man of God beyond a church the God of the Bible through Jesus when that person becomes saved your next project is to submit him to the ministry of the word scripture the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of a teaching priest according to jeremiah 3 15 that i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it is the reason why we took out time to salute the man of god and his wife we salute the investments that have been made to mature the believers to this point including organizing such a conference like this because it's intended to still upgrade your understanding and help you to be of greater stature spiritually but when believers are transformed alone they become frustrated because they know what should happen but the grace to make it happen is not there transformation ends with the quality of the information you have you need empowerment it's why when Jesus was done teaching them after three and a half years, he says, you know what to say, but don't go yet. Tarry until power comes on your message. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated. And then when you are empowered without purpose, it becomes destructive. 
It's like a car that has fuel, tires working fine, and you fire it with no direction. Is someone learning? The second reason Jesus came was to grant us access to the life of God. Someone shout, I have a life of God. That's if you are born again, no. If you are not born again, as I make the altar call, just run and come and stand here. Are we together? If you have the life of God, say, I have the life of God. Let me ask you a very interesting question. How are you sure you have the life of God? <laughs> you just said you have the life of God. How are you sure you are not lying? You see that now? You must have persuasion and confidence. If I random pick anybody now and I said, my dear, do you have the life of God? You say yes. I say why? You say the Bible says so. Yes, you are right, but that's not enough reason. How are you sure you have the life of God? Is the same question saying, how are you sure you have eaten and you are full? You see that now? Yes. The things we have seen, the things we have handled, even of the word of life. Because the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that in your Bible? It says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your heart, your with your mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you shall be saved is that true he says for with the heart man confesses man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation if you have not gone through that process you are not saved period apostle how about singing nice songs you are still not saved you are not bad salvation is not about being good or bad it's about a translation from one kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son are we together now the best person in the kingdom of darkness is still going to hell everybody say salvation i have the life of god i truly believe it with all my heart that i have the life of god if you don't believe you have the life of god you are not even going to be able to minister to the sick you don't believe you have the life of God there are many things you will not believe I believe that I have the life of God when you believe you have the life of God then you can know that you are a life-giving spirit when I prophesy upon you I'm speaking from the overflow of that life we give you God the highest praise from the rising of the Sun to the setting of the same we give you God the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same we give you God the highest praise from the rising of the sun Do you know what it means to have the life of God? The life of God is not just another life that is greater than the earthly life. Please look at me, believers. The life of God is an indestructible life. Many believers do not understand the power of that life. There's what they call bulletproof vehicles. Please look at me. You can have an SUV and you can have a bulletproof version of it. Am I right on that? When you enter a typical bulletproof vehicle, if someone points a gun at you, you smile at the person because there is an orientation you have that between you and that person is not just a mere glass. That person will shoot the gun several times and you'll just be smiling and waving at the person. So when the Bible says you have the life of God, something has come into you that has stopped you from being ordinary. Now, it takes revelation for that, the reality of that life to come out. Because the same people who went to a herbalist over you before you were born again will still go even if you are born again. What will make the difference is the life you have received. Not they are not going to a herbalist. They will keep going. You can't stop them, unfortunately. They have their wills and God will respect it. But what immunes you is the presence of the life of God. They shall take up deadly things it's only when we get to heaven we'll know how many poisons we have taken in our lives as men of god 
It's only when we get to heaven we'll know how many times the names I usually joke with my people. I said only God knows how many people have carried my names to um, Habalis and they shout Joshua Selman. Let him not wake up and, and be alive for Sunday and on Sunday I'm back again. <laughs> my God, the life of God. Now, I don't mean to sound arrogant. You know how many charms I've held with these hands? I'm not teaching you nonsense. If I were pretending this thing, I would have been dead by now. Many times when people are tired, maybe they are repenting or they are, you know, their families are tired of all these things. They carry all those things and come to you as a man of God. Since we can't see God, you said you are the one who he sent. Please help us and know what to do with this. And you hear that this was something that was there before your grandfather was born. They now hand it over to you. <laughs> Are we together? That the last person who held this thing did not even wake up. And here you are, you hold it like a toy, a piece of rag and nonsense and throw it away. Absolute nonsense and you throw it away. You see that now? Or you see what gives power or what takes away power is your state and the revelation of it. I have the life of God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body that no enchantment and no divination. This is the revelation that supports your confidence. Otherwise, you will pick that thing and fall down with it. Say, I have the life of God. We're discussing Jesus. Say it again. I have the life of God. Because ladies and gentlemen, the world will keep getting evil. Arrows will keep flying by day. Noisome pestilences by night. I tell you, there are many kinds of kiss today that is not a kiss of love. It's a Judas kiss. That kiss is not a sign of love. It's a sign to the enemy that this is the one we want that will not finish this year. Two women were sleeping according to scripture and one laid down on her child, laid down on her vision, laid down on her destiny and killed it. And when she saw that she would not make it, she exchanged the destiny with another one. Men for you. If a mother can do that to the child, human beings can do anything. Your immunity is not to keep crying and say, you people should stop being wicked. No. Shield yourself with the life of God. Do you believe what you're hearing? You're a preacher, you keep laying hands on people, they are telling you these things are communicable diseases. If you don't have a revelation of the life of God, I promise you eventually. Hello? Eventually. So before you stand before Pharaoh, make sure you have really seen the God who is sending you to Pharaoh? Moses said, I'm not going anywhere till you reveal yourself to me. I know who Pharaoh is. We grew up together. I will not go and disgrace myself in Egypt. Who shall I tell him has sent me? And he said, I am that I am. And Moses said, let's go. When he stood before Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, nonsense. You just get up and come after running away for 40 years. You come with a rod looking like somebody a fugitive and you think egypt is that dull that just at a declaration of an old man they will release this the same way you stand before poverty and say poverty release my money and poverty say i was there before you were born <laughs> do you know the kind of audacity it takes to open that gate and the spirit will tell you your grandfather's tried knocking he knocked till he died your father tried knocking he knocked till he died for you who is this king of glory then you give them a reply mm. the lord strong and mighty that everybody who did ministry from your family they said they were called the spirit still killed them in shameful way everybody is afraid to take the mantle of ministry now that mantle is already looking for you better get the revelation of the life of God before you get to certain places and speak over destinies somebody will tell you my father is a witch is a wizard
Say, don't worry, just come for the meeting. Make sure you have the life of God and you have a revelation of it. Hmm. Let me tell you the truth. There are certain calls that are very dangerous if you don't have revelation. You will not even live long. I tell you, ask any preacher who knows God. The spirits that will be assigned, there are spirits that are not assigned to men. They are assigned to mantles. They don't follow individuals. They follow certain graces because of what those graces will do. So before you stand before Pharaoh, you must have a revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, every area I know in Africa has some history of witchcraft, some history of whatever, from masquerades to the worship of the dead to whatever it is. Now you suddenly emerge out of nowhere and just carelessly say, I'm saved. And then you want to now spearhead something heavy for the kingdom. It takes light. Some of the missionaries who came, they had a sincere heart, but they did not have light. Some of them never lived to return. Say it again, I have the life of God. I am absolutely convinced that no man can take my life when my assignment is not done. It's, my, it's a revelation. It's, 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 it, I took time to meditate upon it. I truly believe that. You, you, you have no idea what this man standing before you has gone through in the spirit. If I were making empty noise, I would have been long dead by now. Long dead by now. There have been many times in my life, sir, about to take a trip and somebody will call me, maybe some dear friend and say, Apostle, please don't take this trip. I saw a ghastly motor accident and I saw you die. And these are people who are great. They are not just noisemakers. I know that's what the devil planned. But what then is the excellency of the life of God? The ability to rewrite your prophecy. Did you hear what I said? Rewrite your prophecy. Now, you don't just say, oh, I know. Mm -mm. What is your revelation? I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me. Who sustains? The Lord. The same Lord who sustains is the one who owns the earth. It's fullness. All the elements that are used for divination, they were his property. The earth, the sun. And he said, the sun will not be used against me. The earth will not fight against me because I have a covenant with the stones. Every manipulation of witchcraft works based on elemental forces. You have to use water, earth, sun, fire. Without these elements, the supernatural cannot work. And already I have a covenant with all of them. The owner put me in that covenant that the ecosystem should not hurt me on account of my status and my assignment. Do you believe this? So it says no enchantment. That whilst you are sleeping, somebody is saying your firstborn to your fourthborn, may they all die in your hands. And they are chanting it. And you find rest. You shake yourself like a warrior that you are. I have the life of God. An indestructible life. An indestructible life. I have a family relationship with God. I'm not a stranger somewhere looking for access. He is my father. Is the word pata, source, sustainer, defender, protector. Let me give you the final one. So we'll find somewhere to pray. Someone is getting angry. Getting angry and saying, so with the life of God, this thing that has been going on in my family, it's time to bring it to an end. Did you hear what I said? This issue of saying ladies get married and return back to their parents' homes. No matter how it has prevailed, I'm coming with the life of God to put a full stop and say this is where it ends. How about the ones that people get married and the woman is the man and the man is the woman? Huh? Have you heard that kind of thing? No. The life of God. Listen. Everything you are silent about, you have authorized it to continue in your life. Yes, sir. We give you, God, the highest praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. We give you, God, 
the highest praise from the rising of the sun so number one the first assignment and mission of Jesus was to come as an accurate revelation and a manifestation of the misunderstood God correcting our understanding about God number two Jesus came to make the life of God accessible to all men by reconciling us to God number three why did Jesus come listen to this he came as a model of God's expectation for man Jesus came as a model of God's expectation for man John 14 12 a model of God's expectation for man he came as a model of God's expectation for man you want to know how God expects you to live look at Jesus he says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do he shall also do and greater works why greater I've done a teaching on that the reason why you would do greater works is because there are certain miracles that even Jesus himself could not perform do you know why because performing that miracle would demand him dying and since he had not died for instance Jesus could not give anybody eternal life before his death he could heal but everybody he healed still died the first person to receive eternal life was not by Jesus it was by the Apostles Jesus was the basis for that eternal life nobody's sins could be indefinitely forgiven and God's life imparted in its fullness because it would demand death and Jesus was still alive so when he says greater works there is one miracle Jesus did not perform when he was on earth he raised the dead but he could not translate anybody from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son now with one declaration every believer can make that happen that's what makes the work greater not greater miracles there are many other miracles Jesus did that were not recorded in this book John 20 30 and 31 so if you are talking about greater in terms of miracles or volume no nobody has fed 5,000 people out of nothing yet that is a lifetime project for all of us so it's not talking about a greater miracle hmm. are we together say amen. amen apostle I don't know how my destiny should look like look on to Jesus he has become the portrait for you are we together was he killed before his assignment finished his dying was part of the process of the assignment that was why it was not weakness or limitation that means like Jesus you have a right to place a demand and say no power my God no force no enchantment against my destiny would take my life before my time are we together number two did Jesus fulfill his assignment yes that means every one of us should fulfill our assignments our portions of assignments that we call purpose the roles that we have to play in that bigger picture Jesus was focused and dedicated and determined he did not come to the earth doing everything he made his manifesto clear are we together now yes that means if you find yourself doing too many things is proof that you are confused you should be busy but not busy doing too many things there are few major things that actually define a man's life being busy doing too many things is a sign of lack of vision because one of the assignments of vision is that it creates focus it coordinates your energy to target a few things and to achieve them hallelujah he came as a portrait Jesus was victorious Satan could not defeat him even though he tried men tried and could not defeat him Jesus was busy about he was not lazy that means every believer who is lazy is being antichrist antichrist is not only when you deceive people if you act in in a way and manner that is not consistent with the portrait given to you it is an antichrist behavior are we together I humorously say whether you choose to serve Jesus or Satan in any case none of them will accept you being lazy if you run away from Jesus because you are lazy and come to Satan he'll push you back you say you you can go 
because either ways diligence is demanded it doesn't matter who you serve <laughs> are we together when i found out that jesus did not fail in his assignment i made a covenant with my life and my destiny that i will not fail in my assignment someone say i will not fail let the devil hear you hear me my worship people that means if god sent you here and sent you to a belkuta and there are songs within your spirit and those songs should be loud that's bringing revival if you don't bring those songs to us you have failed if there is somebody here who is supposed to be a kingdom financier and that is your prophetic destiny in your rising you see destiny is like a relay many people depend on your own succeeding to succeed if Billy Graham was not saved millions of preachers will not rise because their destinies were connected to his own are we together for every one of you listening to me now there are at least two people beyond yourself connected who's achieving and actualizing their destiny depends on your actualizing your own that means for every time you tell god i'm not serious with you you are punishing all those who have been connected to your grace for every time you tell the lord i'm not serious i, I one day i'll think about this thing I hear you have a call upon my life. Let me, I will talk to you on that in 2027. You peg somebody else's manifestation. Imagine if Apostle Chidume did not manifest what God has birthed in him. All the sons and daughters and the people now who have risen on account of his apostleship will be at the mercy. Listen, this is the reason why God can take the bishopric of men and give another. And that's what he's doing this end time. God is merciful. But you will not indefinitely allow a generation suffer because of the carelessness of one person. When you demonstrate that you are indefinitely not interested in growth and transformation, he will honor your will, but he will take that bishopric and give faithful men. That was the mystery in the parable of the talents. He collected from the one who did not see the value and gave the one. You thought you would collect it and keep it. No, he collected it. So you will find people who in this end time started as evangelists, but later you will start seeing prophetic dimensions and say, when did you become a prophet? It's because their faithfulness has earned them a stake. Because a prophet that was supposed to have risen and raised others decided as an act of his will that I will not be serious with God. And God has seen that there are 10,000 other people tied to that grace. He will find the next available faithful vessel and trust with that responsibility. Are we learning? Jesus came as a portrait of what you should be. I never read my Bible, I'm wrapping up, and see a weak Jesus. Jesus was not weak. I do not see Jesus who ran away from demons, ran away from principalities. No. I saw a diligent Jesus who by age 12, when his teenage colleagues were roaming around, he was at the temple. Listen to me. Let me speak to especially the younger people, the youth in this church. If you are going to be like Jesus, timing matters. Timing matters. Are we together? There is a time to invest in your destiny. Invest in your destiny. Make a commitment that you are cutting away distractions. You have seen that there is an apostolic mandate, a prophet prophetic mandate an entrepreneur mandate god has told you you'll be a leader of leaders wishing and seeing it as a vision and writing it in a book is only as good as it gets until you stand up and put it to work when it has to do with destiny actualization timing matters this is why god gives us advantages like restoration and speed because he knows that by default something would have tampered with our time hallelujah it takes time to know God. It takes time to become genuinely anointed. It takes time to understand scripture. Are we together? It takes time to convince yourself that you are a blessing to the world and not a cause. Start it now. For someone, God is speaking to you already. You came to church and God is saying, I've been trailing you for five years. This, your unseriousness is going to punish your family and punish the people who are looking up to you. The reason for that is because there is a prophetic mandate upon you and God has been patient with you. Time to come to church, you are not interested. Bible study, you are not interested. Prayer, you are not 
interested and God is saying for every time you tell me no you are also telling many people no I hope I'm speaking to an apostle listening I hope I'm speaking to one prophet listening I hope I'm speaking to one evangelist I hope I'm speaking to one kingdom financier hallelujah we live in a world where people like to celebrate dreams and visions and keep it there for 10 20 years they are still celebrating dreams and visions it is often said that the only way to make a dream come to pass is to wake up but provided you are still dreaming you will keep downloading intentions that will never come to pass hallelujah if you are esther are you going to fail in your assignment if you are elijah are you going to fail in your assignment if you are mary will you rob us of seeing jesus are we together if you are Anna the prophetess are you going to pray diligently until jesus comes i made up my mind as a covenant with my destiny that whatever role i have to play as far as making my contribution to the body of Christ is concerned I will use my lifetime to make that happen and this is why you see myself spend myself and I'm spent doing the things that I do first because I love this Jesus but then because I love his body and I realize that if destinies are connected to me in truth then I must make the determination that I will not let those destinies fail for someone God is speaking to you by now if you were serious five years ago you would have found the keys to wealth by now by now you would have started sponsoring conferences based on God's calendar for you you are already behind time that means in this conference you buy books if you are 30 35 40 years and you've not started destiny and you are friends with an 18 year old person sleeping and waking up together that person has the advantage of time he will repent when he's 20 and still has time you are already 40 the time is against you it means you will double up in your productivity am I challenging someone when someone by far younger than you is buying one book you buy two or three because time is against you you got born again at 30 okay i understand thank god you are born again but it takes a long time the person who got born again at 30 and the one who got born again at seven the advantage they have is not the same spiritually it is but in terms of time if all of you are mentored under the same pastor in 10 years that gentleman will be 17 and you are going to be maybe 40 is God speaking to us yes if God intended for you to rise to an executive level and you realize that assignment by the time you are 50 you have 10 or 15 more years in the civil service and because you did not give the kind of effort you should have given not knowing it was in your prophetic destiny you will need an advantage so when you hear teachings about favor you listen twice because there is already something that is against you let me speak to someone already in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god everything that does not make your life look like the portrait of jesus to the nations no matter what it is it dies here permanently shout a believing amen it dies here permanently jesus was always prayerful that means every spirit of prayerlessness that has trapped your life allowing you to grow older without spiritual investment i curse that spirit right now from age 12 jesus was at the temple already learning maybe by the time you were his age your parents were not even saved and so you already had a disadvantage i pray for you in the name that is above all names that whatever it is that makes you to not have an appetite for the word spiritual laziness let it be caused right now do you know i've studied the life of jesus i never saw jesus with friends until he got the apostles disciples what he did do as a teenager i mean he was a young man like every other person wanting relationships you see love is a command but relating with everybody is not 
you have to take a you have to be determined in your life that for the sake of what is on my head i'm wrapping up now and the sake of where i'm going i will have to edit certain relationships don't say we're born together that's nonsense anybody who becomes a representation of an antichrist system in your life this is the system you don't have to fight them but you have to create room enough for the sake of where you are going when god called abraham he went together with his relatives but when he got to the base of the mountain he said i've gotten to a point where i have to go alone i love you we have come this far stay back you will love me too much to not allow me obey god if you go with me there are people who love you too much they will not allow you pray when you are fasting as a young man they'll say this is too much whereas they don't know the destiny that is on your head you pray for 10 minutes they say no 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 this is too much whereas they don't know what you are you are standing in to stop over your family and over the nations again i pray for you every wrong relationship around your life that is stopping you from becoming a manifestation of the lord jesus christ i curse it right now shout a believing amen i curse it right now now listen to me you would think that because jesus was the son of god apostle sir automatically he will be born and he will start his assignment not even jesus escaped the law of process for 18 years from the time he became a teenager from age 12 the bible was silent about jesus until he was 30. jesus as we know was building capacity and by the time he was 30 guess what satan still did not leave him i pray for you the kind of preparation that you need to make for some of you you are behind time you've never read any book here you are not making sowing to the spirit making the kinds of investments that design a great destiny in the name of jesus may god show you mercy and give you speed show you mercy and give you speed show you mercy and give you speed three more prayers for you i want you to please receive it hallelujah now hear me one thing i see in the life of jesus is that he never let help us even when he was going to the cross at every given point in his life they were helpers when the people came to embarrass him as touching financial issues even a fish produced coin when you want to become like jesus you must understand the mystery of the help of god when i was coming into this church i've seen it many times but it occurred to me again a people that have been helped by god Ebenezer there are three ways that God helps a man number one he shows him his mercy number two he gives him access to men number three he introduces him to the ministry of the Holy Spirit these are the three ways men are primarily helped by God the mercy of God is one way he helps the gift of men he will help you through men and number three he will open you up to the ministry of the Holy Spirit who is called the helper for some of you right now you would have become in a greater measure but demons have manipulated the ministry of helps men never show up to help you men never show up to help you simple things become hard because satan does not want you to become i pray for you in the name of jesus standing upon this altar from tonight let help come for you speedily let help come for you speedily in the name of Jesus my final prayer for you there is one thing that Jesus said he was and he is and he also said you are that light when he said I am the light of the world he also said you are the light of the world therefore I want to pray for you whatever has made you become darkness to others they have marked you and said don't come near this man don't come near this woman he's a destroyer he's not a life-giving spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus the son of the living god you will begin to manifest as light from tonight you will begin to manifest as light you begin to manifest as light you begin to manifest as light you are in this place right now and you're saying apostle the Jesus I met oh, is not the one you just talked about. 
then you need to meet the real Jesus the one I met what I was told about him scared me away from him and I did not even go further to build a relationship with him perhaps you may say apostle honestly I met church and I thought church was Jesus I met a man of God and I thought a man of God was Jesus we are in his image but we are not him there is a real person called Jesus and you can encounter a man of God as a means to get into Jesus you can encounter church as a means to get into Jesus I believe that among the many people who are here scattered tonight and please lend me your attention for one last time there must be one person who is an apostle this Jesus you just introduced is the one I have desired is the one I've prayed for is the one I've seen in my dreams is the one I want to love live for and serve all the days of my life there are two calls that I want to make here in one very quickly those who are saying I have never known this genuine real Jesus the fountain of love the resurrection and the life and haven't heard you speak about him today bringing this simple introduction of his person and his mission I want him now in my life or number two those who are saying I think I made this decision before but I really did not understand what I was doing I was just playing church now on hearing you especially that there are destinies connected to me I do not want to fail Jesus fail my destiny nor fail those connected to me that you want to come out and join them here I'm going to count one to five you don't have to come out but that you mean business with Jesus and you do not want to let this convention just pass like that as I count one to five I want you to finally win that war over your destiny I will request that you run and come and stand here and give me the honor of leading you to Jesus the moment I count five I begin to pray one let's celebrate them as they come two come don't be afraid don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to come before you this is a personal matter and a personal affair are we encouraging them three the way you are clapping is the way men will clap for you after your victory emerges apostle I've lived my life anyhow can Jesus receive me come he's able to give you a new beginning I've always known that I have the call of God upon my life, but I've never been serious with him. Come. Come. Thank you. Four. The final count and we're done. Five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. You're joining them. Come quickly. We thank God for this harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. I want you to know that you are standing before Jesus. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Everyone who is genuinely saved made this, answered this call. When you come before Jesus, it is not just the coming that translates to eternal life. It's that there must be a determination in your heart. For one minute, I want you to take me out of your face and just see Jesus standing here. And all that he's telling you is, I love you and we can start afresh. I don't care what you have done or not done. I don't care if you have run away from me like the prodigal son. My hand has been upon your life. I've been looking for you because your mother prayed before she died. And I've come to honor that covenant. But you've been running away. It doesn't matter. He's able to give you a new beginning. As I lead you to make this prayer, please don't assume you're reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart lift your right hand if you will as a sign of total surrender to this Jesus and say after me loud clear with understanding say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. say it again Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, heard your word. I, love, you I love you with all of my heart, of my heart. I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart 
as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i'm a child of god amen father thank you for these lovely people they have come declaring your lordship over their lives based on the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name all right here's what i want you to do for me all of you in concert while we clap for them please may i request that they move who are they following okay you follow the counselors they will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat thank you very much let's honor them please give them a big big god bless you victory life are you are you clapping hallelujah praise the lord now before i take my seat allow me for a minute to lend my voice with um the man of god we'll have the time tomorrow to pray for the sick minister to people and um so come tomorrow with your heart expectant invite everyone you can we trust god for impartations i'll be able to speak over your life and in the name of jesus you will be a representation of the theme of this conference for in jesus mighty name we pray Give Jesus a big hand clap. Can you celebrate Apostle Joshua Selman, please? Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto break kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.